Hi friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel, Sunset Bow Tarot. So today I wanted to do part three of the little series that I've been working on that is around journaling, planning, memory keeping, all the various ways that we keep track of our lives on paper. And this is going to be, again, part three, which is going to be all about fountain pens. I am a relatively recent convert to the world of fountain pens and I have fallen way farther down the rabbit hole than I ever thought I would. I think as most people tend to do once they discover this world, um, but it's been really fun. I've been really enjoying it. So I just wanted to take a look at my newbie fountain pen collection and talk a little bit about the pens that I have how I use them and which ones I'm really enjoying and just sort of go over how this whole hobby has gotten started for me. So before we get started looking at my current pen collection, just to talk a little bit about my history with fountain pens, uh, because this is not the first time in my life that I have tried purchasing or using a fountain pen. So right around probably late 2004, early 2005, um, this was a bit after I graduated from law school and I was sort of just starting my first real job as a lawyer. And I was thinking, oh, I should do like classy lawyer things, right? Like I have some money to spend now because I have a job. So I'll do some fancy classy lawyer things like buying a fountain pen that I'll keep in my fancy office and use to sign fancy documents. So I bought this pen and I tried working with it. And this was, of course in the days before YouTube existed to make all things possible for us the way it does nowadays. You know, nowadays if you buy a fountain pen and you don't know what you're doing, you can watch a million instructional videos. And if it doesn't write the way you want it to write, you can watch a million videos on how to clean them and tune them up and make the nib work the way you want it to. And none of that existed back then. And I had no idea what I was doing. I was just having kind of a miserable experience with it and was very disillusioned by the whole thing. And so I just sort of like tossed it in a drawer and left it there for a while. And then probably, I don't know, maybe like a year later or so, I found it again and was like, you know, I'm never going to use this. I should probably like try selling it on eBay or something like that. So I cleaned it out as best I thought I did, uh, which was not well, as I later discovered. So I cleaned it out and I sold it on eBay. And then the purchaser on eBay sends me this message where they're like, okay, so you sent me a filthy, dirty pen. It is totally not cleaned properly. So then I cleaned it properly and then I inked it up and then I discovered that it wasn't even the nib size that you said it was in the listing. Like I had no idea. No idea that it just says on the nib usually what size it is. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so I basically was like, I am so sorry. Here is a full refund. Please keep the pen with my compliments and never contact me or say the words found and pen to me ever again. So I was basically like totally traumatized by the whole situation. Um, and yeah, that was the only other time in my life that I tried fountain pens up until this past year. So around, I don't know, probably springtime of last year, it wasn't long before I quit my job and I quit my job at the very beginning of June. So it was a little while before that, like probably late spring. Um, you know, when you're in the tarot community, you see a lot of videos on journaling because, you know, a lot of tarot folks, not everybody, obviously, but a, a lot of people do a fair amount of, you know, journaling around their tarot practice. And so you see a lot of people make videos about journaling and inevitably the subject of fountain pens comes up. And so I started getting intrigued and I was like, you know, maybe I'll give a fountain pen another try. There seems to be so much information out there on them and people seem to really love them. I'm just gonna buy an inexpensive one and just try it for curiosity's sake, just to see. Famous last words, you guys. Anyway, um, <laughs> so the first pen that I bought was this pen and this is a Pilot Kakuno. Um, and this pen is very, very inexpensive. These run anywhere from like eight to $10 usually. Um, and this is a pen that in Japan is marketed for students. So like young kids, you know, first learning how to hold and write with a fountain pen. I don't have this inked up right now, but um, you know, they're just, they're fun pens. They're inexpensive. They have this cute little like colorful plastic barrel. They come in all different colors. Um, they have just a snap cap. They're really easy. And um, normally the nib has a little smiley face on it, but I swapped nibs. So I'll show you the, that one in just a second. But anyway, this pen 
I learned two valuable things from owning this pen. So the first thing that I learned is that I love the way Pilot nibs write. They write phenomenally. Um, even in a super fine nib, uh, they are so smooth and beautiful to write with. So I was immediately hooked on the whole experience of writing with fountain pens from the first second that I touched a nib to the paper. Like it was just, it felt so good to write with one of these. However, I also learned that, you know, again, because these are considered like student pens or like like training pens, you know, um, they come with a molded uh, triangular grip, which is supposed to teach you how to hold your pen properly. But when you're an adult and you already have like your set way of holding your pen, this doesn't already always like fit the way that you hold it. And so I, I found out I really don't like triangular grips on pens. Um, and so that is why this is the rare newbie found pen video that you are about to watch that contains no Lamy Safaris or Vistas or All Stars because those all like famously come with a triangular grip, even though, you know, they're they're really, really popular like beginner pens, but I, I learned very quickly from this one that I can't do a triangular grip. So that was a very good lesson that saved me some money in the long run. But um, I also learned that I love, love, love writing with pilot nibs. So the next pen that I got was this one. Um, this is also a pilot pen. This is a pilot metropolitan. Um, these are really, really like common, popular beginner pens. Um, in the United States, these run for less than $20. Um, and they're, they're a metal body. They have some heft to them. Like they feel really high quality and really well made. They have a nice snap cap. Um, these, this is the retro pop, um, pilot metropolitan series. They come in really cute colors and, they have these um fun sort of like retro like 60s 70s kind of like mod you know patterns on the barrels this is a really great pen and this is the pen that i put my uh kakuno nib on because i just missed the smiley face anyway uh you know this is a pen that i just really really genuinely love and um, i'll just show you a little writing sample of this pen um so you can see how it writes so this was a great great second pen for me. And this is a fine nib. I do have this inked up with Pilot Orochizuku Takesumi ink. Pilot Orochizuku inks are super, super nice. Um, this one in particular, I have actually in a cartridge. Um, what I have learned about Pilot pens is that pretty much all of the converters that Pilot makes that fit Metropolitans really suck. They have started carrying the um, Orochizuku ink, which is so lovely, um, in cartridges. And because Pilot makes crappy converters and I have a fair number of Pilots, um, I like to be able to have a lot of empty uh, Pilot ink cartridges on hand so that I can syringe fill them with different inks. And so I did buy a package of um, the Orochizuku cartridges just so that once I'm done with them, I can clean them out and have more um, empty Pilot cartridges for my stash. Syringe filling inks into cartridges in general, I found, is just much less of a faff, I feel like, than dealing with converters in most pens. Um, honestly, I'm a big prefer, uh, I've learned, of just syringe filling old cartridges. So um, anyway, that again is the Pilot Metropolitan. So I do have another um, Pilot Metropolitan in the fine. So this is the same pen. It's just in a different color. Um, this is another retro pop in the orange. I love this one. I love the little flowers that it has um, on the barrel. And these two pens are great. And actually, one thing that I loved about these, because these have such a fine point, they're great planner pens, especially for Hobonichi planners, because, you know, Hobonichis have like this. It has this like really tiny grid. So um, if you want to write small in your planner, a fine point um, Japanese pen is a great option for that. And I bought these two uh, Hobonichi weeks for this year and the orange one like goes perfectly with this week's and then the turquoise one goes perfectly with this week's so I just I love both of these um they have the same ink in them they're both fines they're exactly the same other than the color and um they make perfect planner pens so Pilot Metropolitans highly recommended as a beginner pen I feel like um they are much much nicer than the price point would suggest um, I do have one more Pilot Metropolitan. I don't currently have this inked up. The only reason that I got this one, A, because it's purple and I love purple, but also um, I got this one in a uh, stub nib. You know, stub nibs are, give you more of like a calligraphy 
look to your writing. And I wanted to try one, so, and I knew I liked Metropolitans already, so I just got one with a stub nib, because again, they're not very expensive. I don't have this inked, but I do have a sample somewhere of writing with it, so I will uh, show that maybe in a photo if I remember to put that in. So I'm doing this in kind of a weird order because this is not exactly the order that I got these pens in, but um, this is sort of an order of brands I tried and then all the pens I have in that brand. So the first brand I tried was Pilot and this is the most recently acquired Pilot pen that I have um, and I love this pen. This is the Pilot uh, E95S or Elite 95S, um, which is what they usually call it in Japan. This is my the first gold nib pen that I ever bought. This is a Japanese import of this pen. Um, in the United States, it just has a big E here on the cap um, instead of saying the full word Elite. The thing about some of these like Japanese, especially the more expensive Japanese pens, is that in a lot of cases, you can get them significantly cheaper buying an imported version from a Japanese seller as opposed to buying them from a local uh, American retailer. And, you know, not, not to say that I don't love supporting local American retailers because I, I order a lot of stuff from them. Trust me. I order so much stuff from Goulet pens. I order so much stuff from jet pens. Um, so, you know, but for a pen like this, where you can get this at pretty much like a 50% or even sometimes more discount by getting an import version from a Japanese seller, it was kind of hard to pass that up. This pen is honestly just so beautiful. The cool thing about these E95 S's is that um, they're very small. Like you can see, like you can see this just fits in the palm of my hand. Like they're like a pocket pen when they're capped. Um, but they have this very long cap and this very long barrel up inside the cap. And so when you post them, um, they're much longer. Like they're actually a full length pen when you have the cap posted. So it's just a really cool design. They're really beautiful. They have this like, you can see the, the nib here. This is a fine nib. Um, and again, this is a 14 karat nib. And um, it's got this inlaid design to the nib. So it just like looks really vintagey and cool. I don't know. I feel like this is like your classy grandma's pen. You know, this is like Emily Gilmore's everyday carry, basically. <laughs> like I just, I love this pen. I love the color combination. The capping and posting mechanism on this is just like, it just sort of like glides on. It, it, it's got this just amazing, like soft, silky feel to the way that the cap goes on. Um, and anyway, this is just an incredibly beautiful pen. I love writing with this. The nib is a little springy. It's really comfortable to write with. And the aesthetic of it is just so like vintagey and gorgeous. I love this color combo. I love everything about this pen. It's really lightweight. It's really comfortable to write with. Um, so yeah, this is truly, truly one of my favorite pens. And I do have this inked up right now, so I will show a writing sample. I do have this one inked up with Diamine Oxblood, which is a really, really beautiful color. Um, and it goes perfectly, I feel like, with the barrel of this pen. So this is another one that I have uh, filled up w using just a syringe filled old ink cartridge. Um, so this, this is just like a spare empty Pilot cartridge. Um, again, Pilot just does not make very good converters. And the only converters that fit in this very tiny pen are converters that just don't work very well, in my opinion. So um, syringe filling a cartridge, I feel like is definitely the way to go with this if you want to use um, a non-pilot ink in the pen. So, and the, the Diamine Oxblood is just a perfect, perfect, perfect match for this. I love this pen so much. I think this is tied for like my top two favorite pens. Um, this, this pen is just a delight. Anyway, so that was all my Pilot pens. Um, the next brand that I tried, and again, this isn't quite in order, but um, you know, the next brand that I tried after I had gotten that first Pilot Metropolitan is Kaveco. And so the first uh, Kaveco pen that I got was a Kaveco Sport. Um, and this is a, another little pocket pen, just a cute, cute, like this is even smaller than an E95S. This is the Iri Iridescent Pearl, which was a limited edition. Um, I initially got this pen in an extra fine. Um, and for those who are not as familiar with fountain pens, nibs tend to run slightly different fineness between Japanese nibs versus European nibs. So Japanese, because Japanese writing, you're 
you know, usually writing in Chinese characters. And so they're very, um, you have to make very, very small strokes within a very, very tiny space if you are writing Japanese, especially if you need to write small. And so Japanese fine and extra fine nibs are incredibly fine. And they're beautifully engineered, usually, to write extremely smoothly, even at a very, very fine nib size, which is why I love those pilot pens for my planners, because you know, they're both, they're fine nibs, they're fine Japanese nibs, which means that you can see that these are very, very fine, actually. And the steel one is even finer than the, um, than the gold one, because uh, it has less flex to it. So these write very, very finely. Um, European nibs tend to run like a full size larger than Japanese nibs. So in a lot of cases, like a European extra fine will write more like a Japanese fine or even approaching sometimes a Japanese medium. You know, with the European nib, I tend to buy them a size finer, but um, when I got this Kaveco in an extra fine, I just really hated it. Like it just felt scratchy, it didn't feel good, and I didn't enjoy the experience of writing with it. So um, the very cool thing about Kavecos is that it's very easy to get uh, replacement nib units for them. And so I just decided to go completely the opposite direction with this pen because it is very tiny. Um, and especially when you use a converter, the ink capacity is like minuscule in this thing. So um, I basically just use this pen for playing with fun inks. I don't have it inked up right now, but I bought a replacement nib in like a double broad so that, you know, any kind of fun inks that I put in this pen, if it had like shimmer or a lot of sheen to it or whatever, um, it would look really, really good, you know, with the, the bigger line weight with the double broad nib. So it is really fun to write with now. The, the double broad is very smooth and um, it is it is a great pen now that I've changed the nib out, but I just don't have it inked up right now. So I did buy this significantly later, but this is my only other Kaveco pen that I own. So this is a Kaveco Brass Sport. And this pen is just so beautiful. These come in an uncoated brass, so they develop a patina. Um, the more that you use them. Mine has already started. It's kind of hard to see on, it doesn't look so good on the camera actually, but it has actually started to develop a pretty significant patina compared to what it looked like when I first got it. And the clip that I got for it also is in an uncoated uh, bronze. So the clip will also start to uh, patina eventually. But I just really love the idea of a pen that get signs of use on it and it reacts specifically to your hand and it really starts to show the patterns of wear. So I love that. Um, it is a very, very heavy pen, I will say. Um, it is extremely heavy. It is the heaviest of all of my pens, even ones that are much bigger than this because it is solid brass. Um, I, you know, this is a pen that I probably love the idea of it a little bit more than the actual experience of writing with it, but I do <laughs> really love the idea of it. So it still makes it very worth keeping to me. Um, the thing about this pen is that it is, like I said, very heavy. And so it feels like my hand is hauling like 10 pounds when I'm writing with it <laughs> posted. So I do luckily have very small hands, so I can uh, write with this just fine unposted. Like you can see, it's perfectly comfortable for me to write with unposted. So that is how I write with it. I got a really, really good deal on this pen um, where I found it. They only had it in an extra fine nib, which I already knew I didn't like an extra fine nib, but it was at such a good discount that I still went ahead and bought it. And then again, you can buy replacement Kaveco nib units really easily. So um, I got a uh, gold colored, this is still a steel nib, but it's gold colored uh, medium point nib for this pen, which I really love. So I have this pen inked up in Diamine Ancient Copper, which is like such a perfect, perfect color for this pen. I do actually really enjoy this pen. I love the physical object of it and I love having it. Um, so this is my only other uh, Kaveco. So after I had bought my first Kaveco, um, the next pen brand that I wanted to try was Twisby. So the first Twisby that I got was this Twisby Eco. So the Eco is short for economical. So these tend to actually be fairly inexpensive pens. Normally they run around like the 30 to $35 range. Um, this one was a, a limited edition with the rose gold, the smoke rose gold. So this one was a little more expensive, but these generally speaking are very, very afford affordable pens and they're great, great, unbelievable quality pens for the price. So this one also you can see has 
the rose gold nib. Um, Twisby pens are piston filling pens, which basically means that, I don't have this inked up right now, but it basically means that um, rather than a converter or a cartridge, the filling mechanism is built right into the pen. So basically it has this little twist knob at the end and when you twist it it extends this piston and then when you you know have this dunked in a bottle of ink and you turn the piston back so that it moves backward it sucks ink up into the barrel of the pen so these have huge huge ink capacity it's really pretty in the clear pen to see the ink sloshing around and these have great nibs um twisby is a taiwanese company but they use German nibs for their pens. So their sizing runs a little bit more similar to a German pen as opposed to a Japanese pen. Um, but so this is actually an extra fine nib, but the Twisby pens still write super, super smooth in an extra fine. I actually really love this pen. Like I said, I don't keep all my pens inked up all the time, but I've used this one a lot since I got it and it's a really, really wonderful pen. I own a couple of other Twisby pens. Um, this is more of the Twisby like flagship pen, I guess. This is like their main pen model that they sell. This is a Twisby Diamond 580. This is a piston filler, just like the Twisby Eco. It just has like a higher build quality. It's nicer resin. This one is another special edition, which is this iris color. So it has this like rainbow finish on all the metal parts and it's so freaking gorgeous. Um, you can see even the nib has the rainbow finish on it. Like, it's so beautiful. Um, anyway, this uh, pen I actually got in abroad because I knew that, um, you know, in my rainbow pen, I was going to be using a lot of, like, really fun inks with fun properties. So I wanted to get a broad to really show off all those fun inks to their best advantage. So this is a writing sample with the Twisby Diamond 580. Um, the ink that I have in it is Diamine Polar Glow, which is this beautiful blue ink that has a really really strong red sheen to it. So hopefully you can see as I shift the paper um, how this ink sheens. So this color shift, like it's so pretty. And uh, I really wanted to put this in my rainbow pen because it just goes really, really well. So I do have one more Twisby pen. Um, this is the Twisby Vac Mini. Um, and I got this for a very specific reason. Um, so basically over Christmas, I went to Colorado as I always do over Christmas because that's where my sister's family lives. And um, I was going to take pens with me. And then at the very last second, I chickened out on bringing any of my pens because one very important thing to know about fountain pens is that they do not love changes in air pressure. <laughs> um, basically, uh, you know, if you have a higher pressure air inside the barrel and then the air pressure outside the barrel drops like in an airplane or if you go to a place like Colorado with a very high altitude, you could potentially get ink like leaking or burping out of the pen and it makes a mess. So, um, like I said, I, at the very last minute, I was like, gosh, you know what? I really do not want ink apocalypse inside my luggage. So I am not going to bring any of my fountain pens with me to Colorado. My sister and brother-in-law live in Colorado Springs, which is at a very, very high altitude. And heck, like even my hair products, when I first get to Colorado, they like explode the first time I open them because of the air pressure built up inside the bottle. And so I was like, this is a disaster waiting to happen if I bring any fountain pen. But as a result of that, I had to spend my entire two week plus vacation writing with gel pens, which sucks after the experience of writing with fountain pens. It's just no fun. So once I got back, I decided to do a little bit of research and discover that vacuum filling pens are considered to be really, really good for travel because um, the way that the mechanism works, um, so vacuum filling pens, I can't really demonstrate, but they have this like piston inside where you pull it all the way out and then you push the piston down, which builds up negative pressure in the barrel behind the piston. And then when the piston gets to the bottom, that pressure releases and it sucks ink up into the barrel really fast. And so vacuum pens tend to have huge, huge ink capacity. And, um, and they're very good for travel because if you screw the piston all the way down, it has a mechanism that basically blocks the ink chamber from the nib. So ink can't leak out of the ink chamber. So having this, you know, tighten down while you're traveling prevents your pen from leaking, even if the air pressure changes. So, um, so these are very good to have for travel. So, um, I decided to go ahead and buy one and you know, they also, again, have like 
the biggest ink capacity of any kind of pen. So another reason why they're good for travel because you don't need to refill them very much. This one comes in a nice mini size, which also makes it good for travel. The cap actually screws on to the back to make it a full length pen. And it's a really lovely pen. It's comfortable to write with. I got this one in a fine. So right now I have this one inked up with Noodler's Heart of Darkness, which is um, just a really nice black ink. I have a full bottle of it, so that's why I use this. You do need a slightly larger um, capacity of ink in order to successfully ink up a vac pen uh, because of just the mechanism. So um, that's one of the few bottled inks that I own. So that's what I have in this pen. Um, and I really like it. It writes beautifully. It's got that same uh, quality that I expect from other Twisbees. And this pen is going to be my travel pen, basically. So I'm very excited to have this one. Um, it was just definitely something that I realized I needed uh, after that trip to Colorado and having to be without all of my beautiful pens. So another pen that um, I do have in my collection um, that, you know, I got some of these relatively recently. This is a Platinum Preppy. Um, this one is not currently inked up. These are phenomenal beginner pens. Um, Platinum is a Japanese company, so they make really consistent, really fine, really nice, smooth writing nibs. Um, and these preppies cost $6. <laughs> like, you cannot go wrong with one of these. Um, they're they're really, really great. So this is a Preppy in fine. And the reason that I actually got the Preppy is because of my five-year Hobonichi. So with the five-year, because it is for memory keeping, I wanted to write in it with a more permanent ink. And fountain pen inks, in order to be permanent, they tend to be pigment-based inks, which have more particles in them. And so they tend to be more likely to like clog pens or be harder maintenance uh, kind of for pens. You know, you have to clean them more regularly and so forth. So again, because I'm a newbie at all of this, I was a little nervous about using a pigment ink in any of my, you know, more expensive pens. So I just got the Preppy just so that I could use a cheap pen with the permanent pigment ink. Um, so I was using platinum uh, carbon black ink in this uh, for writing in my five year. Um, I do have, I have a couple of preppies. Neither of these are inked up right now. Um, this is just like a regular preppy that I got from Amazon. This is just like the crystal color. It's just a plain clear preppy. Um, this is a preppy that I got because I needed uh, like an extra five dollars to get free shipping on Goulet pens and I had already like gone way overboard on ink samples. So um, again, like I said, these are like six dollar pens, but this is one of their um, special edition. This is a preppy wa, which is um, one of the ones that they sell that has more decoration, like these Japanese uh, patterns of decoration on the barrel. So I really like this one. It's really cute. Um, and you know, again, the $6 pen. So um, hard to go wrong with a preppy. But after writing with the preppy in my five year for several weeks now, I just, just decided that I wanted a little bit fancier of a pen, a little bit sort of heavier, nicer feeling pen um, to use with my five year journal. So this is a platinum place here. Um, and this is literally like a preppy with fancy clothes. Like it has the exact same grip section and feed and nib as a preppy. Um, in fact, this is literally the grip section fit uh, feed and nib swapped into this plazier from one of my other preppies <laughs> because um it was already inked up and I didn't want to re you know clean something out and then re-ink it um but this is just like like I said it's a preppy and fancier clothes it comes in this nice aluminum uh barrel still very inexpensive I think this pen was like 12 or 13 dollars and in my personal opinion it's just nicer looking I know a lot of people hate this center band but it has a little bling to it. Like, I don't know. I just, I really like how this looks and it just feels heavier and weightier and nicer in the hand. Um, so again, this is a platinum plazier and this color is called Bali Citrus. And I got this specifically because I think it looks really nice um, with the cover of my Hobonichi five year. So again, this is a fine nib. I have this one inked up with um, platinum carbon black ink, which is again, a permanent pigment ink. I like having that ink in a less expensive pen where I can really easily switch out the feed and the nib with another inexpensive pen if it gets to the point that it gets clogged or um, you know I have trouble cleaning it out or anything like that. So yeah, I really like this pen. The other really great thing about platinums is that they have this 
you can see it better on the preppy, but they have this like spring mechanism inside the cap that like when you close it, it really seals the cap. So platinums are like famous for never drying out. Like you can let them sit for a really long time and they don't get dried out, which is another really, really good feature to have if you're going to be using a pigment ink that uh, is more likely to uh, potentially get clogged and crusty if you let it sit for too long. So finally, this is the most recent pen that I've gotten for myself. I like just got this in the past week. Um, this is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. So this is only the second gold nib pen I've ever owned. Um, I got this as an early birthday present for myself. This is another one of those where <laughs> these are way out of my price range to buy this um, from a US seller. Uh, I was able to find this from a Japanese seller at a very, very significant, like over 50% discount. So I was, I was very excited to find myself this one um, and got it for myself as an early birthday gift. Um, the thing about this one is that I'm still sort of like not sure how I feel about it. From an aesthetic standpoint, this is an absolutely gorgeous pen. So this is, again, Sailor Pro Gear Slim. This is from their Shikiori line, which is like uh, based on the four seasons. And they have within the Shikiori line, they have this fairy tale series um, where each pen is based on a different Japanese fairy tale. So this is the spring version of the pen. And the name of this colorway is Dragon Palace. And it's just this really beautiful like celadon green color um and it has very sort of subtle gold sparkles in the barrel and I, it's got these gold bands like it's just this is a really really beautiful pen this nib is also really beautiful this is a 14 karat nib uh, which is standard what comes on the pro gear slims um this is in a medium fine the thing about sailor nibs is that they tend to be very famous for writing with a little bit of feedback. And what I mean by that is that um, they don't like glide across the page quite as smoothly as some of the other pen brands do. Um, they're definitely not as smooth as like a Pilot, for example. Um, and a lot of people really like that. Like a lot of people compare the experience of writing with a Sailor 14 karat nib to writing with like a pencil. And I can totally vouch for that. Like writing with this pen feels like writing very light with like pressing very lightly with a pencil. It like it, it's not scratchy, but you can feel the fact that the nib is on the paper and you can like feel the texture of the nib traversing the paper basically. Um, and some people really like that sensation. I'm like kind of so so on it, you know, like Pilot is my favorite pen brand that I found so far in terms of just the smoothness of the nibs. Um, it's not that I dislike writing with this pen at all. Um, I do really like writing with it. It's more just that it's not my favorite. And I think it sort of like bums me out a little bit. Like even, even with the massive discount I got on this pen, it's still my most expensive pen. It kind of bums me out a little bit that my most expensive pen is not my favorite. So I'm not like thinking about reselling this or anything anytime soon. Like I'm still working with it, getting used to it. Um, you know, and it's not that I don't enjoy using it. Um, but I'm just gonna have to see what kind of an experience I have with this. This might be the kind of thing where I'm sort of like, yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I don't think sailor is for me, or it might just be, this ends up being my only sailor and I enjoy using this when I do use it, but I, I don't see Sailor, at least the 14 karat nibs as becoming like my very favorite, which is ultimately a really good thing because they're very expensive. So um, only owning one uh, that I got a really good deal on is probably a very good thing in the long run. So I have this inked up right now with the Pilot Orochizuku ink in uh, the color Kujaku, which is this really beautiful uh, sort of deep teal, turquoisey teal, dark color. Um, beautiful, beautiful color. I absolutely love the ink and I love the combo with this pen. Um, but again, you know, I'm just a little bit so-so um, on the pen. See how things go. You know, as I just was writing with it just now on my writing sample, I was like, oh, actually that feels really nice. Because like I said, even though it has feedback, it's not scratchy in any way. It, it, it's, it's still 
you know, moves across the paper very smoothly. It's more just that like you can feel the paper through it. Um, so it's not an unpleasant sensation, but it is the difference between like writing with a pencil and writing with a really smooth pen. So it just really depends on, you know, what you're looking for and what kind of writing experience you prefer. So I'm going to, I'm going to still hang on to this and enjoy it and, you know, still figure out how well this ultimately works for me. But again, this is, this is my most, um, most recent pen, most expensive pen, most like gift to myself kind of pen. And so it's going to be an interesting experience to see how this one ends up working out for me. So that is my entire collection of fountain pens. I feel like that was a really long video. So thank you so much for hanging in there with me while I completely nerded out about my new hobby. I've just been enjoying this so much and I love, love the experience of writing with all of these pens. It's been this great rabbit hole to fall down and like, oh my God, I didn't even get into inks, you guys. I'm going to have to do another video where I talk through inks because half of the fun of using fountain pens is all the incredible different ink colors and ink properties that you can get depending on what ink you choose for each of these pens. So uh, it's just an incredibly fun hobby if you enjoy writing, if you enjoy journaling or planning. Um, honestly, writing with these kinds of pens is a really beautiful experience and I'm so happy I got into it, even though it wasn't a good idea to pick up a potentially expensive hobby right before I quit my job, but <laughs> live and learn. Anyway, um, thanks again for hanging out with me. If you are interested in booking a tarot reading with me, you can find me uh, at my shop, which is sunsetbow.com, where all of my readings are available for sale. I also have an Etsy shop where I have been making a lot of fun new uh, accessories for tarot or even things that you could use as like a pencil pouch if you or a pen pouch if you are so inclined um so i have lots of bags and fun stuff all available on my etsy shop which is sunset bow boutique again the link will be down in the description box so thank you again everybody for watching and have a great one bye bye